Uh, next, we have the Shine Theater update by Mr. Brian Bowers. So, Jenny, I don't know who's the <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, sa we're saving our claps for one of the Yeah, for when it really means something. Yeah, I understand. It all depends on what you said. What you're I'm, saying, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Common Council members and members of the community. My name is Michael Licata. This is Brian Bowers, and I work with Brian at, at Bowers Development. And there's some familiar faces here and some that we have not yet met. And what we want to do is give a little bit of context relative to our capabilities because this project's taken a long time and everybody in the community wants it to be done, including us, probably more so than you because nothing is as unattractive to a developer as a vacant building, except for when it's his vacant building. <laughs> That's the worst. But we are in full mode of restoration of this project. We're moving it forward. Um, and one of the things that struck me about the presentations this evening that I thought was great is that these folks restore lives, every one of those folks, and they're heroes, and I wish they were all still here so I could say that. And when you restore a life, you restore a piece of the community. And that is invaluable and infinitely measurable. And in our small way, and I wouldn't equate what we do with what they do, we're not on the same level, but in our way, when we restore a building, and we restore a lot of them, we help restore a piece of the community. So we're, we're kind of glad to be in that company, if that helps understand what it is that we do. So we wanted, by way of introduction, to show you what some of our projects have been. Then we'll bring you up to speed on what's going on at the Shines and where we've gone from the very beginning to where we are now. All right? So oh, this is very fast. This project is a project, did I go? One too far? No, good. This is a project in, in Canastota, New York. It was a contaminated piece of property. It was on nine acres, actually it's more than nine acres, 14, right? And this structure, you could see right through. You could drive through it. This is what's there now, and it's Dutchland Plastics, and there are 100 jobs that are in this community manufacturing plastic. Yeti coolers are made here, at least some of them are made at this location. And those 100 jobs in economic development terms are manufacturing jobs. Every time a job comes to a community, another job self-creates within that community to support it. Manufacturing jobs are five to one. So there are an additional 500 jobs in that small community were helped self-created because of this project. We're proud to be part of that. Oh, that's us with the mayor. Everybody happy about cutting the ribbon at Dutchland Plastics. This is one of my favorite. This building on the left, the security building in Utica, New York, was scheduled for demolition. It was coming down. It was going to cost the city half a million dollars to, to remove this contaminated building. The fifth floor had two feet of pigeon droppings because it had accumulated. It had been vacant for 14 years. Brian went through the building, and one of our key core competencies is taking environmentally contaminated properties and distressed properties and bringing them back to life. So this is now a Class A office building and Legal Aid Society is the sole tenant in the building on the right. So you can see how much better it looks. And it's another 40 attorneys who are now in downtown Utica working and consuming services, consuming products, and bringing additional jobs into that area. So another thing, yeah, we're very proud of that. Landmark Society of Greater, Greater Utica recognize, recognizes directly for our efforts and not knocking that building down. There's another project in Utica, the GE Manufacturing Facility. They used to make radios in that spot. This is current day. We've got this location under construction. We've actually talked with an international chemical company who's looking to put 50 jobs at that location. We're very close to closing that deal, too. This, in terms of our experience with theaters a little bit. This is the New Century Club. That building is the second oldest women's club in the United States. Susan B. Anthony spoke here. Amelia Earhart visited. This is their auditorium area. That golden section, golden brick section, is this. It was filled with debris. It had been coming down. We almost lost this building due to the fact that the building next door had water coming in from the gutter system hitting the foundation. We were about three months away from it just imploding on itself. This was also scheduled for demolition. And now it's a, an under construction renovation project. This is the building you saw in the beginning. This is the Kempf building. 
It was built in was it 18, 1915. 1915, all right. And this is the restoration plan that we have for it. There'll be 38 units up top and seven storefronts. We already have a bank, an engineering firm, a cafe, a fitness firm, high-end fitness firm, and pre-orders for the 38 micro units above. This is another project in Utica that we're taking down because that whole area was contaminated. It used to be a, an industrial laundry facility. <coughs> Excuse me. This is another project in, in Utica that's under restoration, if you can, I'm standing in your way. Um, there's a supermarket at one end. It used to be a loan collection service. They lost all those jobs when you could process loans through the internet and we're talking with another medical system to take that space as well. This is a business park that we have in Syracuse, 84 acres, also contaminated. We are remediating the site as we speak. And again, in this climate of distribution warehouse space, this has become a very popular location, but it wouldn't have been. Folks from the county didn't even know they had this park here because of the contamination. No one would take it on. No one would even attempt it. But because we have those level of competencies, we were not afraid of it. This is another retail location that's going to be turned. This, this is one of our favorites. This is downtown Syracuse. This used to be a cold storage facility that's coming down. These are the actual views from that roof. And we're going to turn this into apartments as well as a Class A office facility. Okay. Also, another project in Rome that was a radiator manufacturer and it, a lot of the contaminants had leaked into the ground. It's right on the major thoroughfare coming into the town. Did something happen? No. All right. And it had been an eyesore for years. We met with the mayor and the team up in Rome, and they said, if you can come in and help us out here, we'd be very grateful. And, and we did. So we're in the process of turning that into a retail site. As far as what we've done up to date at the Shines Theater, I can't read that. You're not. <laughs> I can do that. Can everybody read that at all? <laughs> all right. Better eyesight than me. All right. Work completed to date. And it doesn't look it. It's like growing bamboo. The root systems for bamboo grow for five years before you see a shoot. Just, you know, we'll call it the bamboo theater at some point. But it's really a lot of work has already gone on. Asbestos abatement is done. Lead abatement is done. Miscellaneous special universal waste removals had to get taken care of taken care of. We've replaced the roof, selective de demolition activities inside. The seats inside the theater, for those of you who do not know, were rusted and encrusted with mold and mildew, and we got special permission from State Historic Preservation Office to remove them. So they are removed and we'll be putting in uh, Coliseum the theater, not theater, but Coliseum seating in the future. Masonry repair, repointing the sidings of the building, the exterior architectural design. So a lot of the work, that building had been exposed to the elements for a long time, and a lot of the work that we've done thus far was to clean it and to, and to secure it, to button up the roof, the foundation, and so some of the, some of the uh, rodents and raccoons actually scared poor Chuck Taylor to death almost once he went in. There was a raccoon in the hall. So we, <laughs> we, had, to, we had to secure the building, and we have. All right. Setbacks we've had with this project, just like everybody else, COVID-19, and the public gathering spaces restriction that came out of Albany. We were not allowed to, all of us remember, we couldn't meet in public places. When you finish a project and it's vacant for long, prolonged period of periods of time, it deteriorates faster than an occupied project. We, help, we halted construction of the project for that reason. We had no idea when we were all gonna be coming back. But we're happy to say it's, it's right back on schedule. We had two banks, both giving us verbal commitments to finance the project, both walked away from it in, during the COVID because of the aforementioned issue. We don't know when people are going to be coming back, going out, seeing movies, even if they ever will. Sorry guys, we can't fund you. It would have been very easy for us to excuse, to throw the keys back and say, hey, we can't get funded. We did not. And we will not. We'll finish this project one way or another. But that was another one of those setbacks. And our architectural service provider fell way behind schedule. And when we thought after three months, certain construction drawings had been completed, we learned to our fury that they hadn't been started. So 
these are things that you encounter in real estate development, and we encountered them. So the recent project updates are, we have received a financing commitment. Great news. We have received and awarded engineering services. m and &E Engineering will be doing that. We received and awarded acoustical engineering services. Jaffe Holden out of Boston. We are negotiating architectural services and impending an award. We've received quotes for marquee restoration, and that's what we get so many calls on. <laughs> Everybody wants that marquee restart. And we have, we have, did you award that? No, no, no we're going to. We're close, it's, we're very close. I, we're down to two vendors. What they're going to do though, so nobody freak out, they're gonna remove, whichever one we go with, they remove the marquee. They bring it to their place. Sounds like the Grinch. I'll take it down here and I'll fix it up there. <laughs> That's what they're going to do, and then it'll come back. So once you see that marquee come down. Myself and council just got a big headache when you say you're going to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> just the marquee. Just the marquee, not the building. That's, that's All right? right? Sorry. Um, so that's, that's an impending award. So our anticipated schedule. The architectural and engineering services will be completed over the next three months. Construction work will begin after Labor Day. The marquee will be removed, restored over the fall and the winter months, and we anticipate opening the theater fall of 2023. You know, Shine's Day is September 12th. That's our target, to be able to open on that day. Will we hit it? We'll see. But that is everything that we're striving for right now. So, God forbid, another pandemic or anything of that nature, we are back on schedule, intending to complete this project within a little over a year from today. All right, any questions? Counselors? Okay, this is where Brian stands up. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How much money to date do you have in the project right now? Uh, Just roughly. A, a little over a million. And then the dollars to complete are roughly five. Five more million? Correct. Thank you. Yep. What, is, what is the plan long-term for, for the theater? Is it? Uh, it's not gonna operate as a performing arts theater anymore. It'll be more of like a multi-purpose venue. Uh, comedy shows, concerts, uh, movies. You know, we wanna try to obviously get people in there you know, get as much activity as possible, you know, rather than just have it be a select audience. And will your company run that or are you going to so, contract somebody else out to you do know, it? You know, unfortunately you have pre-COVID and post-COVID. So pre-COVID we actually had six different operators that were interested. Everybody took a substantial hit. So we're talking with some of them again. We're also talking to some other theaters about possibly doing a collaboration, you know, with us where you go to one theater, you know, one night, come to another theater the next. So we're exploring a lot of different options. And in terms of the marquee restoration, will you reconstruct the blade that was in place at one time? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Are you looking to make a profit on that building? I mean, when you say you spent a million, you need five million, so you need six million. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard to get six million dollars back, isn't it? Uh, we do have certain uh, grants, you know, that we've received. We also have tax credits, you know, that we're taking advantage of. So, you know, at, at the end, the performa does work. Um, you know, we've actually explored, and I think it's going to be a great use of the building, you know, actually doing uh, weddings, you right. know, will actually take place there as well. Sounds good. Can I ask one more question? Please. Um, I understand delays happen. You've explained everything. I, I think that's what the public really wanted to hear. You know, what, what was the plan long term? Why is it taking this long to get here? I think every reason you've given is understandable. We were in very uncertain times. And I understand these things happen even in uncertain times, right? It, it's development. There's, there's delays. I guess what I would ask, um, you know, you, you've established a timeline. If for some reason, we, you can't meet that time. And if you could come back and just kind of update us and update the public again, I think that the transparency part of it would go a long way throughout the community for them to understand. Um, yeah, we were anticipating fall of 2023, but we're a couple months behind schedule. This is why. Sure. Yeah, we'd actually like to volunteer now to come back October, November. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of progress, you know, by that point. And we hope to share a lot more information. Great. 
Thank you. Yep. We'd certainly be glad to have one of our council meetings once you're reopened. Yeah. So, no, no, no pressure. A very reasonable race. Very <laughs> I, I you think haven't we got our bill for tonight, have you? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I think we already paid in advance. Yeah, yeah. 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 checks in the mail. <laughs> Anything else, council? Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you.